How's it going, guys? We have a past level question for Dermatology Step 1 Internal Medicine 2CK. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, mahl, man underscore medical. Links down below for me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group, group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 33 year old man, three month history, issue lesions on the elbows. Physical exam shows clusters of vesicular lesions on the elbows. Hemoglobin 11 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5 in males, non menstruating women, 12 to 17.5 menstruating women. Serum studies positive for anti endomycial antibodies. Question wants to know which of the following is most likely to be seen as patient. And then we have an image of the elbows showing us uh, what appear to be vesicular lesions. Holy shit. So I'll just comment for starters that uh, this is obviously celiac disease, okay? That's past level, as I said. Anti endomycial. Basically the same thing as anti-glidin slash anti-gluten. And you can also get anti-tissue transglutaminase IgA antibodies. Hemoglobin is slightly low. This could be one of two things, either anemia of chronic disease or iron deficiency anemia, probably iron deficiency anemia. Okay, and the reason is because you need to know that IDA, super fucking high yield for celiac disease, because when we have flattening of the intestinal villi, that's what you see on histo, that's very important. Well, we get impaired iron absorption in the duodenum, okay? It's a long fucking discussion. I made many clips on this stuff, but if you get a big fucking massive paragraph and you're not sure what's going on, is it lactase deficiency? Is it celiac disease? You're not sure, but you see that hemoglobin's low, MCV is low, it's celiac disease. So let's just whip through the answer choice here. So choice A, antibodies against desmosomes, wrong fucking answer. This would refer to pemphigus vulgaris, okay? And of course, antibodies against hemidesmosomes, also the wrong fucking answer, first to bolus pemphiglae. So... These are both just idiopathic autoimmune skin uh, conditions where desmosomes confined to the epidermis hold cells uh, side to side, whereas hemidesmosomes are at the base of the membrane, hold the dermis vertically to the epidermis. Pemphigus vulgaris slightly worse than bolus pemphigoid because pemphigus vulgaris, you can get oral lesions and you can also get positive Ny Nikolsky sign, which is slothing of the skin with friction. And also, if you do uh, immunofluorescence, you will see a net slash fish net like pattern with pemphigus vulgaris. For bolus pemphigoid, you'll see linear immunofluorescence, which makes sense because it's the base of membrane. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, cowdery bodies, wrong fucking answer. So these are intranuclear inclusions. You can see with the herpes viridae. It's nothing to get fanatical about. I mean, Cowdery A bodies can see with HSV 1, 2, VZV. Cowdery B bodies, holy shit, CMV. I would actually say, truthfully, that int knowing intranuclear inclusions are seen with CMV infections, that is actually a very high yield detail for you, Assimile. I say, I, I say it that way because it seems very nitpicky, okay? And we still we have a numerical exam, but that shows up on the NBMEs, it shows up on 2CK. So for example, they'll tell you that a patient had a renal transplant six months ago and now has worsening renal function tests. Biopsy of the kidney shows intranuclear inclusions. The answer is gancyclovir therapy for CMV. Okay, that's how they assess it. So intranuclear inclusions, okay? Owl eye appearance for CMV. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, IgA deposition at the dermal papillae, correct answer. This is dermatitis herpetiformis, okay? So I don't really know what to say. Uh, some of you, sure, you'll think this is too easy. All right, well, as I said, it's past level. So you need to know that celiac disease, the important extra intestinal manifestation is dermatitis herpetiformis. So it means it looks sort of like herpes, okay? And it'll be on the extensors classically. And you get this histo finding of IgA deposition at the dermal papillae. It's very buzzy. Now, of course, you can see other extraintestinal findings for different conditions, like Crohn can classically cause erythema nodosum, which is redness of the shins. It's not a rash, it's a paniculitis, which means inflammation of subcutaneous fat. Ulcerative colitis, you can see pyoderma gangrenosum. Okay, it's just uh, a lesion usually on the arm with necrotic, an erosive lesion with necrotic debris. So, Real quick, Munro microapsis, wrong fucking answer, refers to psoriasis, okay? So psoriasis, you can get these collections, literally microapsis in the skin of uh, neutrophils, okay? It's not gonna show up, US assembly doesn't give a fuck, okay? I just threw it in here because when students don't know an answer, they choose weird sounding shit. And then finally, Poutrier microapsis, also the wrong fucking answer. This would be mycosis fungoides, which is a cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, okay? 
if you get a question where there's some sort of rash on like an arm, let's say, and you're not sure what's going on, but you're able to eliminate all the others and you're left with mycosis fungoides, it's an important differential and you can get these cerebriform shaped nuclei and also pouchier microapses, which are just the T cell collections in the skin. If it extends to the, if mycosis fungoides extends to the blood, causes a T cell leukemia, it's known as Caesarie syndrome or Caesarie syndrome. Point is, wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.